Hi, Bill here with 30 Minute Woodshop. Thanks for joining. Today, I want to talk to you about Pinewood Derby. It's Pinewood Derby season. This is the big event for Cub Scouts throughout the U.S. Now, I have to say, kids love building these cards and they love to race them. So, let's, over the next few minutes, talk about some of the tips, tricks, and I'll, at the end, I'll even give you some secrets and how to put your son's car or daughter's car into the winner's circle. Let's start with the very first thing. Aerodynamics do not matter. So number one, don't worry about aerodynamics. They can put a solid block of wood down there, won't matter. I can run you through the calculations if you want. Does it make a difference? Let them do whatever they wanna do. So what you're looking at in front here is my son's cars from Tiger Cub through Weeblos 2. Okay, they're all winners, every one of them. First place winner, okay? Here's his very first car. All I did here is help him guide this through the bandsaw just to give a little bit of a curve because again, that was something I wanted. He didn't really care. His, the most fun he had was spray painting this and even more fun was putting the stickers on. He spent more time choosing and slapping the stickers on than he did anything else. Now, number two, here's where the adults, you as the adult can come in and help him out or her out. Weight. Number one thing here is weight. You have to be at five ounces or 4.9 ounces or 4.89 ounces, but you have to be at five ounces. So close to five ounces as you can get. That's where your energy is. Again, I can run you through calculations. Basically, it's potential energy. The more weight you have, the higher up. The more the car, the higher the speed the car will have when it hits the flat spot on the track. So you want to get that weight, all right, here, you want it five ounces. Now do that. If you're serious about this, you need to get a scale. These things are pretty cheap. They're 15, 14, 15 bucks, maybe 20 bucks less. I don't know. I'll put a link at the bottom. I'll find one and put it there so you can find it. But five ounces. Now here's number two. See this back axle? The center of gravity, the weight, all right, the balance point of the car needs to be about seven eighths of an inch forward of the axle. The reason is this. What you want is all the weight, as much weight as possible to, to the rear or on the rear axle. But you want enough weight up front so that when it's going down the track, it doesn't start bouncing and jump off. If it jumps off, you're going to be disqualified. So that's seven eighths to one inch forward of that rear axle. So get that balance point set up. Okay, there's several tools out there you can buy. I'll see if I can get a link and put one of those in the bottom. Uh, you don't really need that. You can kind of like just hold it over your finger and figure it out. Okay, so that's number two. Number three, wheels. Now, you can't go out and buy new wheels and not use the ones that come in the kit. The ones in the kit are just fine. You don't need to do a lot of things to them, like polish the centers and all that kind of stuff. You don't really need to do that. Here's what you do need to do. Feel the edges of the wheels, all right? Look, feel for any burrs or little lumps or any uh, uh, flashing, all right? Anything that stands up and is sharp. If you find something like flashing, you're gonna take some sandpaper. Now I have three sand pieces of sandpaper here, 800, 1200, and 2000 grit sandpaper. That's all you need. Grab a piece, if it's a small piece of flashing, you can feel like five thousandths of an inch. If you feel that, that little bit, grab a 2000 and just stroke the wheel until you get rid of it. If you find a burr, all right, that's a little bit sharper and sticking up, you may have to go to something like one of these. All right, these are Swiss pattern makers files. These are very small files. I'll put a link to the bottom of these things too. Take the file, find the burr, and just rub it gently three or four times, five times. All right, make sure you keep this, the, the uh, curve of the wheel. You don't want a flat spot. Then come back with the 800 grit, the 1200 grit, and the 2000 grit and smooth that thing out. Easy as pie. All right, the next thing you want to do, though, is this. You need to look in here on the wheel. The wheel has a, has a uh, uh, hub here in the set inside. Check the, in, check the outside edge of that hub. Make sure there's no flash or burrs that will be rubbing against the body. Same thing, if it's very much, take a file, hit it a couple times, 
Take your uh, sandpaper, 800, 1200, 2000, and rub it down. If it's small, just use the sandpaper. Make sure you maintain the roundness and the flatness. That's all you gotta do. Here is the next one, the axles. All right, your axles generally are pretty darn good coming out of the box. Now, this one's one of the older axles and has a bunch of burrs on it. So if, if you do have one that's older, and it's got this one here, you can see the three or four lines right here. I can tell you how that happens from the, the manufacturing process. What you want to do is just take your file and you're going to file that off. It only takes about a minute or two, max, and you want to keep that roundness. See how I'm, I'm moving that? Once you've got that done, come under here, under the head, and the same thing. Look for any little burrs or anything sticking up, and you're going to run the file across just like that. Keep it flat, run the file across until you get rid of all those burrs. Okay? Now, the next operation. Take this thing, you're going to chuck it into your drill. And take some sandpaper. And all you're going to do is, as you pull the trigger very gently, you want this thing to spin, not real fast. You're just going to sand underneath the head and all that. And you'll be able to hear when it finally goes away. Right now, probably can't hear it, but I can. You can hear it lumping along on some of the high spots because I haven't taken all them off in this. You'll do that, again, 800, 1200, and 2000 grit. You're gonna polish that surface. It's doing two things. One, it's, it's smoothing the surface and get rid, rid of any uh, excess friction, but it's also putting in scratches. Those scratches will carry the uh, flakes of graphite when you start lubricating this. If it's too smooth, the graphite really won't stick to this. It'll just be in the plastic. Uh, there's the juries out on whether that's good or bad, but I can tell you this works, having done it. So once you've got that done, right, you have a, a finished wheel and a finished uh, axle. Pull the axle off, put the wheel on the axle, Put it back in, and the next thing you're going to do is this. I'm going to use this here to show you. I really probably should come have you guys come in, but between the axle and the wheel, right here in the center, you're going to dump as much graphite as you can, and then right here underneath the hub. Now, once you've done that, whoop, you can see how sensitive these things are. They roll pretty easy. You're going to hold the wheel with all that graphite in it, and you're going to start and you're going to pull the trigger, nice and slow. Okay, you don't want to go very fast because you don't want to melt the plastic and you don't want to distort the plastic at all. Just hold it there for a little while, about 30 seconds, 40 seconds. Put more graphite in. Do it again. More graphite. Do it again for about three minutes. Okay. Now, what that's doing is that's pushing the graphite in to the plastic of the wheel. That means you're coming pre-lubricated. And it's also leaving graphite on the shaft. Now keep the shaft, the axle, keep the axle and the wheel mounts together. Do that for all four. Next thing you're gonna do is this. Your wheels are all set, okay? What you wanna do now is you want to go ahead and push the axles in. Now when you push the axles in, what you want to do is take a business card and slide a business card alongside the body, okay, between the body and the wheel. That's how much room you want between the body and the wheel, no more. That does two things. You do that to all four of them, it's going to set the width exactly across the body. You do that for all of them, okay, and you're good to go. The next thing you want to do, you can use this card again. It's pretty easy to do. Use the business card and make sure your wheels are 90 degrees. All right? You don't want them cambered or anything. You don't want anything kicked in or kicked out. If, you, if they're twisted either way, you want to give them a gentle twist, gentle twist, and get them back into alignment. 
Okay, you want them 90 degrees. See how easy that is? Doesn't matter which way you do it. Once you've got those things lined up, they're lined up this way, okay, and they're lined up this way, make sure they're not kicked in at all. Those you kind of have to eyeball and look. Now, once you have all that out, some guys will tell you, oh, you got to put a little kick to them, kick them in, you get less friction because it's only part of it. Don't do that. The reason you don't do that is because now you've introduced friction at the hub. You want these things to be as perfectly aligned as possible. So get them aligned. Now, once you have them aligned, okay, your wheels are in and they're aligned, next thing you're going to do is turn the car over. You as the adult, or you can have your son do this, or daughter, you're going to squirt as much uh, graphite in here between the body and the uh, wheel. Get as much as you can in there and just sit there and spin these wheels. Have them watch TV, right? Just spin these wheels. And every minute or so, add some more graphite. You're doing two things here. You're putting more graphite inside the wheel, but you're also putting graphite against the body. So as the wheel rubs against the body, that's lubricating it. Just keep doing this. All right, watch TV, add some more graphite, about three or four minutes, five minutes a wheel. Same thing. And it doesn't matter whether you go this way or that way. Don't let even kid you. You're not, you're not doing anything other than, than wearing in the graphite. Okay? Once you've got to the point where you think you're done, grab a stopwatch or watch the clock and do this. And see what the rundown is. The rundown from the time you hit it to the time it actually stops moving should be someplace between 15 and 20 seconds. Now these, are, I haven't checked this one, but these used to run at about 18 to 19 seconds. These cars, this car was built in 2006, so it's pretty old. It's been knocked around a bit. The wheels not lined up very well. But you do that to all the wheels and see how long they run. Again, you're looking for 15 to 20 seconds. If you're in the 15 second, you're a fairly fast car. If you're in that 19, 18, 19, 20 second, even 22 seconds, you probably have a winning car. Okay, now you've taken care of pretty much the weight, the weight location, removing the burrs and off the wheel and, and polishing the axles, and now you've got the rundown, okay, and you have enough graphite on the sides. Here's, here's a secret. I got a couple more too. Here's a secret. I didn't learn this till my last year. People aren't always very forthcoming about how to win. <laughs> Go with imagine. I don't know if you can see this, but these wheels are no longer black. These wheels are actually graphite colored. That's because they are, I rubbed graphite into these things. All right. The reason you rub graphite into the actual tire is because if this thing's going down the track and any of the wheels catch on anything, it'll slide. And rather than worried about whether the wheel's gonna actually turn, if the wheel's for some reason not turning, not turning well, it, it bangs up against the, the side and the wheel stops for a second, the wheel will still slide across the track. So it maximizes the opportunity to, for the thing to not lose energy by friction. So put a, I'm just put a bunch on there and rub it in. Literally just rub that stuff in, get a tissue, and just sit there and rub, 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 rub until that thing no longer looks black. Matter of fact, I don't know if you can see these things, but they're basically, like I said, they're, they're graphite. All right, that's it. Those are the things that you need to do as an adult to help your son or daughter win. Now, let me give you a couple of cheat codes. Go look at your track. Find out whether the track drops, the track pin release pin, drops forward, or it lifts up, okay? And it doesn't matter whether it drops forward this way or it drops directly down. Better for you if it broke, it rocks forward, but here's what you do. If you notice these cars, this car, all right, is a Tiger, and Weeblos, right, is Weeblos 1 and Weeblos 2 were in one pack. These two cars were in a different pack. Two different methods of release. 
So you notice how this is cut back down here underneath? What that does, I cut it, I cut it on top and the bottom of this one because I didn't know where our track did. But if it's on the pin, and as the pin starts to release, the car is going to start moving. If it's like this, the car is not going to start moving until the pin's cleared. So if you can cut back part of the material, you can get away with it. This one, of course, these two were top release. So basically they came in like this. And then as things started to move, the car already was moving with it. It'll give you anywhere from a quarter inch to a half inch jump on your competitors if they're not doing this. Matter of fact, you can see we came back. This is this was his best one he ever made. He he loved doing this all by he did it all by himself. Took my chisels and carved this out. Put his little uh, Lego guy in there. Uh, painted it all up. But uh, but same thing here. He came back. My my son came back and, and carved this out. To give him a little bit of a an advantage. Worked. By the time he got to Weeble we Two, he kind of got tired of the whole thing. So he went he went easy. <laughs> And he just made a wedge and drilled some holes in it with a Forrester bit and made a piece of cheese. Still won. All right, he still won. We beat the guys who bought, uh, bought the axles, bought the lathe, cut axles, you know, and did all that. You could buy that stuff. Go ahead if you want. It's not going to put you... It just saves you the work if you want. But, like I said, let your son or daughter do the body. doesn't matter what that body looks like. They want to color it with a crayon, let them. You take care of the wheels and the weights, and you can put your son or daughter in the winning circle. So, hope you got something out of this. I always have fun doing these things. A uh, couple, couple things, you're going to need some tools. I'll put a list of tools down at the bottom you really should have. I would suggest you get a bandsaw. If you're going to be in this for five years, you know, tiger through wheelos too, I would definitely get a bandsaw for the 100 bucks. It's going to cost you 120 bucks. Um, I would, you have to have, you have to have a uh, scale. You don't want to show up on weight night guessing what your weight is. Get the scale for 14 bucks, 15 bucks, or 20. I don't know what they cost these days. You're going to need, you're going to need files. All right. You're going to need some sandpaper. After that, it's up to you and your, your son or daughter what kind of paint you want, what kind of decals you want. Heck, go have fun with it, man. So on that note, hope you got something out of this. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, do me a favor, hit like and subscribe. There's links in the bottom. You can uh, explore, check those out. You might find something useful. And uh, hey, until next time, good making.